So the, the thing is, is that not every submission works from a position. You could begin to try to apply something and they may defend it, you know? The, the, the thing is that you have to have control, okay? One big aspect of control is balancing the control of the head and the hip. You don't want to be, let's say, too heavy on one or the other. I've shown you guys where if I'm real adamant about controlling him here, I'm not controlling his hip. He can move that hip, yeah, and see, and he brings any, but bring the knee across my hip line. Yeah, right there, yes. You see how much space he makes right there? So I already lost side control there. If I'm too hyper-focused on the hip, he can frame my head, okay, yeah, and turn into me. Yeah, yeah, right there, let's bring that knee in. See those two movements? I'm already out and in a bad position. So you have to be balancing between head and hip. Okay. Also, what I usually do is I always create lateral pressure because my objective on top, side control, is to keep him flat. I don't want him to turn into me too much or to turn away from me too much. As long as he's flat, his frames are going to be pinning him to the mat. So if we're here and he starts turning, I start countering his movement. And I feel, because my right elbow is blocking the far hip, my right hip is on his right hip, okay? And I put my hip on his hip and I did, you did, we did, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, you see that? Okay, now, from here, again, look. From here, one, two, and you're here, okay? From here, you can begin to step over the head and you still have the arm. And now it's difficult for them to stop your mount as you get here. What may happen is that your right foot will still be kind of in a knee on belly position here. But then what you do is, is that as you begin to torque their arm, you begin to lift their head off the mat here. And then you get here. So here you have a straight arm lock, but you always keep your hands kind of in this position here because most likely he's gonna roll his thumb down and he's gonna bend it. But then he puts himself in a reverse kimura right here. So then all I do is shift my hips and torque him this way here. Because it's, I can go here, but that hand switch oftentimes could cost you the actual position. So here for a reverse kimura grip, look, here is a regular kimura grip right here. Okay. But see how awkward it is? Versus getting a reverse Kimura grip here and just keeping it bent right here. Because here, I could begin to torque him out. Okay. If he begins to try to lift his head up, I pressure that right there. Okay. And then look. You got the wrist. And you have an arm lock here. You grab the hip. Just keep pulling it out this way so he can't walk around and you control the wrist because now it breaks up you know, like this. Okay? So one more time. So you're isolating and you're stepping over. So you're here. Isolate one, two, three. Okay? My head is trapping his arm and going the opposite way. That's my right knee, and I'll do it from another angle here first. Here, okay? And if you get it past, it's great, okay? Because from here, you can already finish as well. Here, if you get it caught on the shoulder, you can finish it. Or, you begin to sit him up, but then stop him right here. Finish one, if he bends it. Right here. Heavy here, hip, and then, and then twist. Like that. If you're 
still here. You have a little bit of unlock, okay? And if he just keeps trying to walk to the, yeah. You twist it, it's gonna be very difficult for him to do anything. Maybe he will roll. Wrenching his arm out. I'm twisting his wrist and I'm holding him. Because he can't, 